what's going on YouTube it is Mr. Ferguson here once again thank you guys for coming back for another video here in Central North Carolina where guys it is an absolutely very blustery windy day out here in North Carolina today uh, so I'm trying the mic again it failed on me last time I was trying to do a video so hopefully it works all the way through Thank you for tuning in today. Hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, thank you for tuning in for the watering video we did recently. Go check that out if you missed it. Also, we did a video on the five tips uh, helping uh, new beginners uh, to survive in the summer. It's a process, so go check that video out. And just thank you guys for your positivity. All of you that comment all the time, Mr. Ferguson, you're doing great. Mr. Ferguson, thank you for this video. You're helping me out my lawn. And it really uh, it blesses my heart. It really, truly does to know that I'm giving back, helping, um, uh, not just, I'm not here to brag about my lawn. I'm so far past that. After the first year, I was like, man, I'm able to do this. And then I did it again. The, the whole self-pride part left off. Now I'm trying to get other people to where I am so they can enjoy their lawn, enjoy it in the with their kids and everything. So thank you for tuning in today. Today, guys, I want to get into something I didn't even mention to you, but I did a soil test recently, sent it off to my good friends over at RX Soil. And let me just stop right there and just say a big thanks to Neil and RX Soil. Uh, these guys are so awesome. I hope that you guys will uh, patronize them, use them, um, get some soil uh, kits from them. I'll link them below. I don't get anything for that. Um, they were just so kind. They, they, they saw the channel somehow. I guess maybe I bought one and they saw me do a review with their product and they sent me for free five kits just out of the kindness of their heart to promote their, their, their product, obviously. But they've just been super responsive when if I've run into anything or had questions, they've been Johnny on the spot with their customer support. So RX Soil, thank you so much. And uh, we're going to talk about their uh, soil test today. I recently did one. I want to show it to you. Did we improve from last soil test? Remember, our pH was at level uh, 7. Did it stay the same? Did it go up? Did it come down? We're going to get into that into a uh, in just a second. So let's take a look at the old soil test first. All right, guys, again, <laughs> took a deep breath. Excuse me. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you can't hear all this wind. It is so noisy. So if, uh, if it's not that noisy on the camera, the mic is doing its job. Um, so I want to, uh, again, we're going to be brief this Friday, but I want to talk to you about soil test and uh, specifically my soil test for my lawn and just show you what I'm looking at and show you uh, where did we go from one test to another. So to recap for any new people that we picked up, which we picked up a lot of people since February, we did a soil test in February and I'm going to stand over on this side so that I can put the soil test beside me here. So here is February's soil test. Now, the first thing you notice on this thing as I look at it here on my phone is our pH. My pH was way up there, very high at around a seven. And many people said, Mr. Ferguson, seven's not bad. And they're correct. Seven's not bad, but we're right on the edge. If we go a little bit higher, we're getting into danger territory where we're kind of slipping away and our salt and our pH level is going up. We don't want that. And so I, I treated this as a warning, warning. Our pH is as high as we need it to go. We need to start bringing that down. We've been working on that. And we'll talk about that here in a second. Secondly on this, our organic matter was down to uh, around medium, not bad. Our CEC um, to contain, I can't remember what that is. I, I don't have the, the, the meaning here on this picture I've got, but basically to retain nutrients, I think that was very low or below low. Um, our phosphorus, I've not done any starter for in this lawn behind me last year or this past fall. Um, until the, the year prior where we did some type of start. It's been like a year and a half since I've done any starter for any phosphorus whatsoever. And yet our, our levels here were almost optimal, a little bit in the high optimal range. And then we got our K. My K, if you've been around my channel, you guys know my potassium levels. I've been like, I need to get them up. I need to get them up. I'm in North Carolina. Potassium is our stress um, um macronutrient, if you will. I was thinking not micro, it's macro. It's the, one of the big three, our N, P, and K, right? I want to get my K in optimal. And I've been working at this for two years now, uh, one and a half really, really strong, two years um, to get my K up. And I'm, we're still, even as of February 10th, 
of 2023, my K levels are still at medium. So again, calcium right there with it. We've talked about calcium a lot in the five tips for summer. You want your calcium to be in optimal levels uh, or, or, or even a little bit higher, near high. You want to have good calcium levels is what we've been talking about. How important calcium is, we talked about that. We may do a, a separate video on that later on just to make people aware that didn't see the five tips video. But our calcium is right there around where our K is. Our manganese knees excuse me, magnesium has always been high. I don't know if it's my dirt or if I did something in the beginning, but manganese has already been high, always been high. Our sulfur is pretty low. And again, we'll talk about sulfur in a little bit. Uh, zinc, and then you get into the micronutrients, which I'm not as concerned about, but my iron has been completely high. I really don't understand that. And, and my iron levels have been high uh, on every test I take. I don't know why. I've laid off iron a whole lot since last year, and it never really has started dropping at all. So that'll be curious to look at. And then there we go. And then we've got um, boron and, and a couple other micronutrients there. So you get the picture. And I've talked enough about what we saw in February. So my main concerns on this test when we got this test in February was number one, pH. We need to bring that down. What do I need to do? Well, I talked about it and we've been doing it here in the past several weeks that um, we need to start using ammonium sulfate to help lower pH. And that's what I've been using ever since spring started from the lawn supply company. That's why I did it. One of the reasons was this soil test. We had high pH. It, one of the side effects of 2100 is it adds sulfur, uh, which we was talking about on our test. We were low on sulfur anyway, so we're going to add sulfur and it's going to bring our pH down. Um, and then obviously it adds the 21% nitrogen to the lawn. And then um, the other things here was our calcium. We wanted to work on calcium. Pete talked about how important calcium is in our lawn as well. So that is the main takeaways I took from the uh, February test. So now, drum roll please. So let me put up here now the new test. And there it is right there. You guys can see we did end up dropping our pH level down from 7 to 6.8. Um, and so that is phenomenal. That means the ammonium sulfate that I've been applying to the lawn has actually made a difference. It went from 7 to 6.8. It also means we got a long way to go, right? I want to get that down for me personally. Uh, fescue loves slightly acidic soil. So I want to get that down to somewhere around 6.5. That's my goal. So I'm going to continue with the ammonium sulfate and I want to continue to add uh, sulfur in the lawn. So organic matter, we're actually at 5.4. We're actually in optimal range there. We increased there. Remember we did the Anderson's biochar and uh, we did one bag of that, spread it evenly around the yard. It looks like that helped because that put our organic matter in optimal range. This soil test, let me just tell you straight up, this soil test looks beautiful to me. I love what I'm seeing here. pH is coming down. It's better. And uh, now we got organic matter in the optimal range. Our capacity retained nutrients. That's what it was. CEC. We're at 12.3, also in optimal range. So that biochar seems to have helped. So I'll link that below if you're interested. If these numbers have been low for you, maybe adding one bag of the Anderson's biochar may help your lawn. Um, we did have a comment from Elevated Lawnscapes over there. He said, don't add too much of it though. If you add too much of that biochar, it can swamp your yard. It can retain a lot of moisture and it's hard for your, your lawn to dry out. So be warned of that. I do want to mention that. Our phosphorus remains optimal at 57. Our potassium, look at this guys, we're at 100. Optimal range for potassium is 103 and we're at 100. We're almost made it to optimal. It's taken so long, like two years, two and a half years, but we're so close to getting our potassium in the optimal range. So we'll continue to use 0025 green kick. We'll continue to use some of the lawn supply, um, uh, fight ORR, our fighter, uh, like Ryan Norris stuff. And, uh, and, and, and we just put down 19019 for uh, fertilizer soon. So maybe that will even push us because that may not have got calculated in this test. I sent the test off before the 19019, so we may already be there. And then calcium, we're at 68.7, 70 is optimal. We're 2% away from our calcium being in the optimal range. That's so exciting, we're almost there, perfect time. Our ma uh, manganese, or magnesium, excuse me, is still 
it's slightly above, but it's 25.3 high is 25. So we're almost got our uh, magnesium down into optimal range. Sulfur 24, optimal is 29. So we're getting closer. And as we use ammonium sulfate, the sulfur shouldn't be a problem. We should be able to get that in optimal uh, very easily by using this ammonium sulfate uh, fertilizer. Um, and But again, we're limited in how much we can go before the heat starts kicking in and we got to lay off that stuff. And then we'll, we'll pick it back up possibly in fall. Zinc, and again, we go into micronutrients here. The man uh, manganese is still high. Um, our zinc is um, is right in the middle. Is our, our zinc is a little high, but good, but it's in the optimal range. Our iron is still, again, same. Uh, 11 to 51 parts per million is what they want. We're at 171. So I'm not touching iron. I'm not applying a lot of iron, but it is just way up there. Not sure how to bring iron down or if it matters. So if you know that, let me know. And then we got copper. It's a 1.8. So we're just barely in optimal there. And then we've got boron, which is 0.6, which is below 1.3. But again, if I use something like microgreen, I'm putting more iron in the lawn. So I don't want to do boron. So I'm not really concerned about the boron there. So there is my soil test. And so I am thrilled. I am more than thrilled to say we're making progress. Now that to me is a great, that's probably my greatest soil test ever. And it's because the ammonium sulfate is working. That's the thing I wanted to see the most. I want to get my calcium, excuse me, my calcium levels right. I want to get my pH closer to 6.5 range. That's when the grass really thrives, even though 6.8 is totally fine, but I want to keep trending it down. And then and then let off of the ammonium sulfate and see, does it stay there? Does it go high? Does it drop down where we need to add lime? And so that'll be interesting to look in. But I wanted to show you guys the, the soil test from February compared to the soil test in April. All of those changes we did in about two months of applying ammonium sulfate, applying all the products we've applied, some potassium products and things like that. And as I mentioned, we put down 19019 of an old winterizer I found in my shed, and that hasn't even been calculated in this test. So we're heading in the right direction is the point of this video. And I thought it was perfect for a Friday video. As you're watching this, I'm actually playing in a yearly tournament with my dad and, and two buddies uh, from our church uh, at the Eastern North Carolina Church of God tournament down at a, a club called Wedgwood. Um, so we're down there. I'm anxious. I'm looking forward to this. I've been practicing a lot in the evenings and not spraying my lawn. So it is so windy today. I was going to spray something today for the video, but I thought I got the soil test back. I was excited to share with you guys the results. So I hope you enjoyed it. This is where my lawn is. This is where I've continued to work and work and work and uh, get my soil test in a proper area and it's going to continue to fluctuate and so uh, there's not as i said the lawn is sort of on cruise control that's why this fall if you didn't check out the lawn project video um uh, hopefully until something crazy happens here this lawn is just is just cruising we don't need to do anything drastic here we just add a little bit of this a little bit of that survive summer and hopefully we're just doing pre-emergent come this fall God bless you guys. Thank you for tuning in today. Give the video a thumbs up. If you know somebody that uh, has issues with uh, reading soil test or, or you think this would help somebody to show them my soil test, pass this video along to them. I hope your lawn's doing well. Thank you for the positivity. Comment below where you are if you're doing a soil test. If it's been a while since you've done a soil test or if you've never done a soil test, consider rx soil they're a great company you can always look uh, also look at uh, my soil savvy and also yard mastery they do great tests as well but uh, rx soil has been great to me and i recommend them for you god bless you we'll see you next time on another lawn care video take it easy